All right, we're going to talk about using interpolation to estimate missing data points in your data using Python and Power BI. So if we look at our original data here that's represented in the top graph, we can see there's lots of holes or missing data that we cannot graph because there's nothing there. But however, in the bottom graph, we can see that we've done some estimation to figure out what that data could look like. And there's a couple different types of estimation we're going to do. We're going to do a linear interpolation. We're going to do a nearest interpolation. And then we're going to do a weighted time interpolation. And each of those are going to give us slightly different results. And if I quickly cycle through those, right now we're looking at uh, time, but let's go to linear. And we can see that it's able to fill in the missing points where the actual data is represented in light blue. And then the interpolated data is in dark blue. And you can see it's estimated this data based on the slope between these two data points. If we go to nearest, we can see a flatter type of estimation where we looked at the nearest value and been able to estimate what exists between those two. And then time, which is going to look very similar to linear with the exception that this is weighted based on the days and We'll compare those two after we write that up in our Python script. So let's flip over to a Jupyter Notebook and bring that in. Of course, you could use a script editor to script everything out, but it's easier. You get more feedback in your Jupyter Notebook. So let's document what we're doing. So when we copy and paste this over to our Python script editor, It'll be very clean and clear. So let's import the libraries that we want. And we're going to import pandas as, and save it as a variable PD. We're going to import numpy and save it as the variable MP. And if you want to know what those two packages do, pandas is a data manipulation library. And then numpy allows us to do data manip manipulation also, but also gives us some linear algebra. Now let's document what we're going to do. We want to bring in our data set and we're going to save that as a variable DF and we're going to just use the pandas variable and use the read CSV function. Then we're going to copy and paste. We're going to use the pandas read CSV function and then we're going to copy and paste. Then we're going to copy and paste where that file exists on our PC. Mine is in my working directory. So all I need to do is write machines.csv and encapsulate that in parentheses. And let's take a look at that data set just by using the variable again, df. You can see this goes from the first uh, 2022 all the way to the 25th. So we go, it's consecutive days all the way to the 15th. And then there's four days missing at the 19th. And then there's three days missing when we get to 22nd. And then there's two days missing for 25. The days that are skipping are not missing data. That's just not data in our data set. What we're going to deal with is missing data, which you see represented with these NAN or null values. Now that we have our data set, in let's use uh, different types of interpolation and save them as different columns so i'm going to press escape and b the first thing i want to do is check the data types and i can use my data frame variable and use info function there just by typing in dot info and then we can see we have object which is represented by a text and a float so the first thing we need to do is make sure that I, our date is represented. So I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to use another function and create a date type for our actual date column. 
I'm going to isolate the date column by using bracket notation. Then I'm going to use equals to assign this. I'm going to use PD variable, and then I'm just going to use the function to underscore date time. And then I that function is closed off with the parentheses. And then I'm just going to add in the date column again. We can see, go down here and we can see that now we have the date as the proper data type. The next thing I want to do is we have an index here, which is indicated by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, all the way down to 18. When we do linear, it will be using these numbers to create a linear connection between the existing data points. But we also want to be able to use a time-weighted interpolation, which looks at time and gives us uh, the results based on the actual days. We want to set this date column as the index so we can utilize it. I'm going to use my data frame bear variable and do set index. And then I'm just going to pass in the date into that function. And now you can see that we didn't save it. We got the same result because we need to pass in a parameter called in place to make sure it's permanently passed in. So I'm going to use in place equals true. And then I'm going to hit shift and enter. And now you can see that index numerical index disappeared and we have a date time index. So now we can start building those columns that we want. So let's build a column where we are interpolating the nearest data point, which will fill these missing values with the nearest value. So we want to create a column called user underscore nearest. And now we have that column created. And we want to assign that to a user column. And now that we have that column isolated, we can use interpolate function. And we can press shift tab to see what parameters this function takes. And there are many different types of methods. You can see that the default is linear. And if you wanted to see all the different methods, there's information within this. You can open this all the way up. And there's a lot of information here that will give you a lot of insight. But it's always better to go down to the PyData or Pandas site and just see what all the different type of interpolations are. Close this out. So now we're going to pass in the method that we want. So method equals, and we're going to use nearest. All we have to do is run this, and you can see that a column is created with nearest. And if we look at that particular line, which is the fifth, we can see there's a missing value, and you can see it has been interpolated where it's taken the nearest value which is 499 and added it here and it's also taking the nearest value here which would be 458 and added it here and you can see we don't have missing values anymore for that particular row so let's copy this twice so copy and paste and copy and paste and let's change the name of these columns to linear user linear and then we can call this user time and if we can change the method to match our heading so we want to use and then we want to use time here so now we can shift and enter and you can see that we have created three columns based on different types of interpolation methods. I want to create one more particular column that allows us to indicate which of these are empty, like a flag in our data. So we're going to use NumPy for that. So we're just going to create a new column called DF. And then we're going to call it flag. We're going to assign that with that equal sign. Then we're going to use np, which is our NumPy variable. And then we're going to use where function. 
And the where is a conditional function, and you can see it indicated there. So we set the condition, and then we get um, an example for true and false. So we're going to say, okay, we want to use that user column, and we want to say is in A, a function. So in an is in A, and I'll show you what this function returns. I'll go down, and then I'll copy and paste that. And if I run that, you can see that gives us true and false. So where it is true, there is missing data. Use double equals, which is an equal in Python. So when it's true, we want to say missing data. And then the other option will be data. Let's run that and see if we have any issues. Nope. So then we can use that flag in our visual. So once we in your notebook, go over to transform. And the first thing we want to do, we can see that I've already done this, but we want to duplicate our original data set. So you can right click, you can hit duplicate. Then what we can do is go over to transform, hit run Python script. Now there are a couple different steps we need to get this to work within the Power BI environment. So we have all our code here and we need to add a few more steps. One, when we're dealing with date time, we need to add an, an error parameter that says like if we have any errors, you can coerce or attempt to change it. So I'm going to equal errors equal and then parentheses coerce. Also, we need to ensure, and I'll show you this in a minute, if I run this now, we're going to get a error to eliminate our data frame variable here where it's machines because if we read the first line, it says data set holds the input. So we don't need that. We just need to reassign that. So I'm going to say df equals data set. So we reassign that data set variable as df and we can just say this read and hit OK. We'll get another error and this is what we need to do to fix this. If we go over to our steps, we need to not have our date formatted. So we need to let Python work with the dates because dates are unique for each platform. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of change type. And then I'll go back up. As you can see that we were able to get a table. If I click that, we can see that we've gotten our data. So you can see we have all our results here, but we don't have the date column. And the reason we don't have the date column is because the date is the index. So we go back over to our Python script and then we just reset our index, df.reset underscore index. And then we say we want to reset it to the date column by passing in that parentheses. And then we want to do in place equals true. And we can run that again. And now you see we have the date and all we need to do is change that over to date. And we can see all our other data types are complete. We can close this, apply. So now let's get our visual set up. We can easily bring in our different types. We're going to bring in the date. We're going to use So we have the original and we can bring in our flag to get the different colors just over legend. Let's make our canvas a bit bigger. All right. So we have our canvas and then we bring in our now take a look at the results. So we have our interpolated nearest and we can just see that it's 
And each one of the sections, it shows the nearest value. So 439 here and 462 here and 499 there. So it's kind of a flat type of um, estimation. When we get to linear, you can almost see the difference between the two points. Where we take 499 and we can see it's on a downward slope until it gets to 458. Same here, 439 to 462. You can see the slope here. We also see this comes from a very low value to here and it will create a linear slope estimation. And then this data, we know these are actual days that are not there. So this is where time comes in a little bit better because you can see the results up until the missing days are quite similar until we get to the sections when there's no data and it's looking at time. You can see the difference here is 325 and 307 with time weighted. And then we can see the difference here instead of looking for the middle value, like from 325 to 375 is 350. But with time weighted, we get a different value here, which is closer to this actual value, which is 300. And 386 will be closer to this 400 value, which is time weighted because this is on the 7th of February and this is on the 9th and this is on the 26th of February and this is on the 27th. Those are different ways you can use interpolation to feed in estimated data. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.